All right, we're going to start here. It's the first time we've ever had a chat conversation with Tweet. So we posted the question earlier, if I want to know where your music comes from, whom should I ask? And we were thinking of, usually in the media, they say, who were your influences? Well, I grew up listening to heavy metal, or I grew up listening to Mozart. And we feel, since we're composing from, hmm, that the real question is, where does the music channel through us from? Who are we that we channel our music? So it's very metaphysical. You know, who are you that wove the composition and play, and what are you aiming for now? Well, the reason we got into this is because we posted this question, and our good buddy, Infinite Metaverse, by which I mean chat, said, context for the question would be nice. So we said, okay, well, there we go. Instead of a closed question, let's have an open question. They said, oh, I thought it was about licensing music. <laughs> and I said, I can see that. <laughs> it's a good thing we clarified it. So it, it sounded funny at the time. You had to be there. I don't know. But the point is, we re-entered today with the thought on our mind that identity and music have a lot in common. Just as music can have different audiences and purposes, and we've been doing that with our videos, so too does our identity. We change our identity to accommodate the circumstances. And if you don't believe me, the last time you talked to a nephew or niece or a little kid, I'll just bet you talked a little bit more like this and said, hello, and how are you doing, little Johnny or little Janie? Or... When you're interviewing for a job, you say, why, yes, I am a qualified in AXYZABC. So depending on your circumstances, we kind of tune how we present ourselves. Yet, and yet, is there not some inner true core? And then the evocative question we feel is, what is that core? And where does it matter? Here is, where does our music come from? That's the whole way this started. So long way around the barn. Where does our music come from? We're channeling it, and we've talked about we compose from listening, we compose from our memory. Um, certainly there are influences, yet somehow, some way, when you, we feel when you transition into proactively creating and messing around with music, um, it's coming from somewhere, and, and who's in charge of your music? And in the in the states, we'd say who's buried in Grant's tomb, and in Europe, I don't know, maybe who's buried in Napoleon's tomb or something. Although, if we asked who's buried in Alexander the Great's tomb, we'd get the answer nobody, because nobody knows where his body went. So you know, tricky little questions. That said, speaking of brainwave tempos in music, we clarified the notion of perceived beat tempo. So what we went up here is we had researched delta, theta, alpha, beta, gamma waves and figured out what beats per minute that is. But it's not what the tempo says, like if it said a quarter equals 120 or something. It's it's if we hear a music that goes boom, 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 how fast is that? And, and that's a beat. And we could translate to a beat per minute, you know, boom, boom, boom. That's like one beat per second, okay? So we can figure it out by this magic formula, and we did. So in here, in our piece that we started in the last stream, we just said the 60 times the number of notes in a bar times the seconds in a bar tells you the perceived beats per minute. So here, for example, is... Da, 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 da. And that's going to give us delta waves. And then if we double it, as we do here, actually that was quadrupling it, then we're going to get, um, it, what, right, what it says here, alpha waves and so forth. So we cleaned up our notation on the improvisations. We made layers corresponding to the different brain waves. And then we experimented with it until we could get something that Muse score could actually play without stalling. And we even jacked up our CPU speed for a while in case that was the problem. We kind of had to hide a lot of parts and we had to kind of mute a lot of parts so it would play, but we got it. So what we're going to do is play our 
improvisation too, and we also varied the instruments that are playing so that they would kind of correspond to how fast their part was. So here we go. And now, uh, well, that concludes today's stream. But what we like about it is we still like how it gets faster and faster, 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 faster to the end. We still like that. And now we're starting to think maybe that's some kind of, you know, progression. It's almost like coming out of a deep trance state into a very awake alert state. Maybe that's what's going on there. If, if these do correspond to brain waves, and, you know, what the research we looked up said those brain waves correspond to. So, so you know, we... We certainly feel music. We feel it physically, like when the beat, and we feel it emotionally, and we feel it cognitively. In any event, our ideas for next time are to continue working with the improvisation and the perceived beat, and we have a couple ideas to carry forward, another set of chords to pick out from our scale. And Carnatic music, remember, has a lot of fast vocal figures in it, and we're thinking mm, those ought to map to um, brainwaves pretty well. Uh, shout out to Maestro Playboy, who stopped by. He's been here before. And Miss Cleo, who's definitely been here before. Tune in next time to see what happens with the brainwaves. Do take care, do come back, and do keep on streaming.